What up, what up, what up, lunatics, welcome back to the channel. We're back out in the bait laboratory today, and we're gonna be making some baits, and uh, I'm gonna be featuring another brand new dual molds that just came out on the market, just became available, and I think the Florida guys for sure are gonna like this mold, they're gonna be really happy with it. But I think anywhere that you like to swim a worm or use a six inch curly tail worm, is gonna, this is gonna be the mold for you. Um, you could do that on a shaky head, you could do it on a Carolina rig, you could, cut this down and use it as a chatterbait trailer, spinnerbait trailer, just swim jig trailer. There's a lot of different applications that I can think of with this mold. And what it is, is the new six inch dual mold cutter worm. And this mold has a bunch of different features that I'm gonna talk about in today's video. And we are gonna make some of these so you guys can see them, um, what they look like, but they have a hook slot in them. And they obviously have this curly tail right here, but they also have a tail mold in the actual worm mold itself. So if you buy this mold, you're getting a four cavity mold for the worms and then a four cavity tail mold as well. So you can do different color tails and everything. Really cool concept the dual molds came up with. I don't know if anything else like this exists. I've never seen it in different molds, but this mold is pretty cool. I have poured a couple of these cut worms already and I'm gonna do a rigging video later on. And uh, I'm gonna show you some different things that I thought of when I saw this mold that even the guys that don't like to fish a swim worm can get out of this bait. I think it's gonna be a great Nico rig bait and I'll show you guys that in a future video on how I think to rig it, how I can modify this to make it into a really, really good Nico bait. I think even leaving the tail on could definitely produce some fish, but I'm thinking about getting rid of that tail and I'll show you guys how I plan on doing that in a future video and hopefully we catch some fish in that video as well. But uh, yeah, really cool concept from Dual Molds. This is the six inch cutter worm mold the new Essential Series mold from Duo Molds. Really cool concept that they came up with here. And uh, yeah, let's get into it. Let's make some baits. So in today's video, we're gonna be using the Duo Mold Soft Baits Regular Formula Plastisol. We're gonna get this mixed up. I'm not gonna do it on the camera because you guys know what to do. But in case you're watching a uh, bait making video for the first time, you wanna shake this up really, really well. Spend some time shaking it up because you wanna get all the different chemicals and stuff that's in there all mixed together so that way when you do heat this up and get it up to that 350 degrees which is what you want it to be at you get the consistency that you're looking for so when these baits get cooled down they're not all tacky and stuff like that but soft baits formula regular formula that's what we're using in today's video so i'm going to get some of this ready to go and then we'll add some colorant in there and i will get to making some of these baits okay so i got our plastisol ready to go and I already got it up to temp and everything, so all we gotta do now is add our colorant in to our plastisol. And we are going to start off with Watermelon Brown X2 colorant. And if you guys watch my channel, I use the Watermelon Green and the Watermelon Brown a lot. I'm gonna shake it up so that way all the colorant and everything gets mixed together and everything like that. Um, I use these colors because they're just staples. You're gonna catch fish no matter where you're at on green pumpkins and and watermelons and you just can't really go wrong that was one two three that was six drops of watermelon brown in case you guys want to follow along with the formula six drops watermelon brown and what i think i'm going to do is i'm going to go with a little bit lighter of a color because i do know that with these essential series molds the cast aluminum on the inside does dull the color on the baits a little bit, which I don't mind at all, especially on a bait like this. So I'm gonna do it a little bit lighter than I would on a CNC mold, so that way some of the clarity of, of this color comes through. And we are gonna be adding in some black, blue, and green flake into our baits. And I actually think I kinda nailed it right there, first try. So let me get my measuring spoon for my flakes and then we'll get back together and we'll start adding some flake in here. Okay, so what we're gonna start with is black. The black flake has a tendency to darken your baits a little bit. Um, this is a quarter teaspoon right here. And this is only one cup of plastisol, so it's not gonna take a whole lot of flake to, to really achieve what we're going for here. So it's a quarter cup or a quarter teaspoon of 
black flake going in there. And as, yeah, it definitely darkened everything up a little bit, which is fine, because I knew that was gonna happen, but we still have the clarity because there's not a ton of coloring in there. So the next one we're gonna do is some blue. And you know what, I'm gonna flake this up a little bit. And I'm gonna put another quarter teaspoon of the blue in there. Mix that in there together. And for those of you guys that like a lot of flake, I think this is gonna be the worm for you because we're also gonna add some green in there too. Actually, you know what, I might change my mind and do some purple flake. I think the purple flake might kinda do a little bit better, be like more of like a Mardi Gras, watermelon candy kind of a color. So I think that I'll do some purple next instead of that green because the blue in there with the green kind of looks like looks like a green in there. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get that purple flake out, come back with you guys, add that purple flake in, heat this up, and we'll start making some baits. Okay, so we're back with our purple. This is real small, fine purple. So we're gonna go with another quarter teaspoon. So there is a lot of flake in here for a one cup of plastisol. We got basically a teaspoon and a half of different color or different color flakes in here but i still think that this is going to turn out pretty cool it's going to have a lot more flake than i normally put in my baits but for the video and stuff i think it's going to turn out pretty darn cool yeah that purple's not overkill because i thought if i used a bigger purple it would kind of overpower everything so i wanted to keep it with a smaller purple but my plastisol starting starting to thicken up and uh, let me see if I can get, oh, it's gonna spill, so I can't do too much. But hopefully that's coming through on camera for you. Pretty cool little color right there. Pretty cool color. I'm gonna run some of these baits with no different color tails, just some straight color like this, and then I'm gonna add some chartreuse tails. And uh, we'll probably give some of these baits away, so stay tuned in the video. And uh, if we do a giveaway, there'll definitely be a scene in this video where it shows you exactly what you need to do in order to get in on the giveaway. Okay, so I know that this is a different camera view than we normally do. Normally I have a chest mounted camera when I do this, but because this mold is vertical like this, when you need to pour down into these cavities, the GoPro is not gonna capture it very well. So hopefully this camera angle is okay for you guys. But our plastic saw is ready to go. So I'm gonna get that out of the microwave and then we'll get our injector going and uh, start making some of these, these cutter worms. I, I really think this is a cool mold. I think the mold with the tail uh, mold already in there is a really cool concept for sure. Um, I've poured a few of these already. It pours really, really well. It's kind of cold out here, so I might end up with a cold injector, cold, cold mold. So getting all four of these the first try might be a little bit difficult, but we're gonna see what we can do. And I'm gonna draw up this plastisol, come over to the cutter word mold, all the way down, even pressure. You gotta hold that pressure. Hopefully you guys can see what we're doing here. Top off that sprue. Next one, even pressure down. This is a really cool watermelon color. I actually really like it. I'm kind of, I thought it would be a little overkill for my liking when it comes to the, to the plastisol, or yeah, to the amount of flake in the worm, but it's actually kind of cool. I'm kind of surprised, not, to, not, not gonna lie. Not gonna lie at all. A lot, lot better than I was anticipating. So I got all four of them poured. I don't know how they're all gonna turn out. I, I have a feeling because this mold was so cold to start off, we might end up with a couple issues or something, but we'll find out here in a second. But um, in case you guys were wondering, you can definitely get all four cavities poured with one single injector. Okay, so I think our worms should be ready to go. Hopefully we're in camera view. Like I said a second ago, I'm playing around with this new camera angle, but I think we should be in view right here. But yeah, we got all four of our worms and they turned out really, really cool. Um, this watermelon kind of candy color turned out really good, especially in this uh, Essential Series mold. I actually have one that kind of had an air pocket, didn't turn out very well, probably just because of the temperature of everything. But overall, um, three out of four is not bad for that first pour. Like I said, this mold was really cold. I could have heated it up and stuff, but um, I chose not to, I just wanted to go with it. And uh, yeah, I got three out of the four. Definitely got two of them. This top didn't fill in all the way. 
um, in the sprue, but I, I have to check the, the tip of it, but it looks like it's actually pretty good. So not too bad for the first pour and the cold injector and a cold mold, but pretty cool worm so far. Okay, so here's a better view of our worms. Like I said, that watermelon candy color turned out really, really good. I'm trying to get everything nice and flat in here to give you a, a good view of everything. And I'm gonna try to get this closer to the camera to kind of give you guys a better idea of what we're dealing with here. But yeah, I really think these turned out good. I'm really happy with them, especially for the first pour. But first pour, but as you can see, a couple of them might have some issues, but we can pour a couple more and make up for that. But cold mold, cold injector, it's always a good idea to heat that kind of stuff up when you're pouring plastics when it's cold. But overall, not a bad start. Okay, so we are ready for round number two of our cutter worms. I'm gonna get our injector right here, draw up that plastisol, come over to the mold, even pressure down as always. I'm gonna hold that pressure. And then one thing when you guys are getting your plastisol hot is take your time when you're getting your plastisol hot. When I burn the plastisol, it's because I am taking, not taking my time, trying to go too fast, trying to get that plastisol warmed up too quickly and that's when I end up burning it. That's when I lose a lot of the clarity and everything that you're looking for when you start adding that coloring in there. So take it 30 seconds at a time um, and that's gonna be a good bet for you. If you take it that 30 seconds at a time, you're not gonna lose a lot of clarity. You're not gonna get a lot of that yellowing, but um, that's just a tip that I've learned is when I'm impatient, that's when I burn my plastic. When I'm not impatient and I take my time, I don't burn my plastic. So we got those four worms in there, and then here in a second we will um, get some of these chartreuse um, remelts ready to go, and then do some some tails with um, chart, some some worms with some chartreuse tails. Okay, so we're gonna take off our clamps and check out our second round of cutter worms. It turned out good. Looks like I got all four of them this time, and. Um, that's our chartreuse tails getting warmed up right there that you're hearing. But yeah, I think these turned out pretty darn good. Really happy with them. And um, here in a second, I'm gonna go over some of the um, cool prop or cool things about this mold, like the the hook slot and this tail mold and everything that's that's unique about this bait that I think you guys want to know about. So let me put these away or put these down, and then we'll talk about the mold, and then we'll get those chartreuse tails going. Okay, so that's a better angle, better close-up of the worms right there. Um, try to get them closer up in the camera for you guys. Again, there's our chartreuse tail plastic all getting ready to go. But as you can see, there's that color in there. Good close-up of the worm and everything. Pretty cool. Let's get these set aside, we'll talk about the mold, and then we'll get some of these other ones made. Okay, so I decided we are going to do a giveaway in today's video. So someone's going to win a bunch of these worms, probably like 20 or so of these worms. And um, I think they're really, really cool. I think you guys are going to like them a lot too. But to get in on the giveaway, it's the same as the last time with the Slick Shiners. you got to subscribe to the channel. You've got to like the video, comment on this video, and share this out on your social media. And I'd love it if you tag me when you share it out on social media so that way I can share it out on mine as well to really kind of get things going and get people excited about the giveaway. But again, we're doing a giveaway. It's gonna go from a week from when this video goes live and I will pick somebody out and um, get their information and I'm gonna be notifying the winner on the comment that they leave on this video. So make sure to check back to see if you were the winner so that I can get your information and send these baits out to you. So remember, subscribe to the channel, like the video, comment on the video and share it out and tag me so I can share it out on my social media as well. Good luck, hope you guys get excited about it and uh, good luck to you guys who participate. Okay, so here's a close up of the cutter worm. And if you can see this line right down the middle right here, that is going to be your hook slot. So this mold not only comes with a four cavity, this tail mold, but it also comes with that hook slot, which I think is a really good addition to this mold. But again, we're talking about the tail mold as well. This tail mold basically allows you to make different color tails that you can then add into your mold on this side and come out with a worm that has a different color tail than the actual worm portion of the mold right here. Pretty cool concept to have them both connected because in most cases you have to buy just the tail mold and then you'll end up having to buy the worm mold separately. 
So then you end up having to buy two molds in order to have the different color tails. Or you got to pour an entire worm to get just the tail portion of it, cut it off, set it back in. But this way it allows you to not have to do that, to just make the tails ahead of time, add them into the mold, pour the color worm that you want, and then you have a different color tail than the actual worm color, which we're gonna do right now. But those are some of the cool features on this mold that I wanted to kind of outline to you guys in a close up. Okay, so our plastisol is ready to go to do some of these tails. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make eight tails right away, and then we will make eight of these mold, or eight of these cutter worms with the chartreuse tails. And when you're making tails and small, small runs here, it doesn't take a lot of plastisol. So don't push too hard thinking that you didn't push enough because usually you gotta push more. There's just a smaller amount of cavity you gotta fill up so it doesn't take as much plastic, obviously. Just something that I had to learn the hard way because I was like, I didn't push enough plastic in there and ended up overdoing it and then got a lot of flashing and stuff. So it doesn't take a whole lot. So when you just feel that injector stop, that's when you wanna stop. So I think we should have all those full, top off this last sprue. Let them cool down and then we'll check everything out here in a second and then we'll get four more of these tails poured up and then we'll start making some of these uh, watermelon candy worms with the chartreuse tails. Okay, so off camera, I open up the mold and here are our tails. Uh, the color's not coming through that great but they're kind of like a greenish chartreuse color. Definitely gonna contrast with our worm color. Still think they're gonna turn out pretty darn cool but there's our tail and as you can see when you remove them from the sprue it'll go right back into the mold and uh, you'll be able to attach that watermelon candy color that we already made. So let me make up four more of these tails and then we'll make up the rest of our worms. Okay, so our tail color is ready to go. So I'm just gonna get my injector and then we'll draw up the plastic. Come over to the tail mold, even pressure down, just hold the pressure for a little bit. And remember guys, it doesn't take very much to fill up the tails. There we go. Number three. And number four. Top off that sprue. And then we'll check these out as soon as uh, they cool down. All right, so our tails are good to go. Take them out of our mold. Just like that, set everything down, try to get you guys a better look at them out of the mold. And just like that, we got our other four tails ready to go. I got the uh, watermelon candy warming back up right now as we speak, and then I'll show you how I remove the sprue from these, and then we'll put them back inside the mold on this side, and we'll start making our finished baits. Okay, so we got four tails sitting right here. I'm not gonna show you how to do it on all of them that I'm making today, but uh, basically if you look at this tail closely, there's a couple little lines that match the line pattern that is on the cutter worm itself. So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna take a pair of scissors and I'm gonna cut along that top line. Now it doesn't have to be perfect, but you want there to be some consistency in your plastics so that way you can you know repeat the process so pick somewhere that you can remember each time and cut your tails in that position each time and then you're going to have you know plastics that turn out the same so that way you can replicate everything over and over again but pretty simple as you can see you just cut them right there at the end along that top line that you'd be able to see i can't get it to come through on camera but then you'll end up coming up with you know a little tail looks something just like that and uh we put that back in the mold, just like this. Let me show you guys. Sometimes this is the hardest part, is just getting everything to kind of go right back in the mold as it's designed. You just gotta kind of play with it a little bit, but you can get it to happen. You just set everything back in, just like so. And then we're gonna end up just warming up our Plastisol, and we'll fill everything in like normal, but that other color's gonna stop right here at the tail. And then we'll, that's how we're gonna end up with two different colors in our baits. So I'm gonna finish setting up these other four off camera and then we'll get our watermelon candy color ready to go and uh, pour some baits. Okay, so our Plastisol should be good to go. And uh, we're gonna grab one of our injectors and uh, 
draw up this plastisol. One thing that's a good idea to do when you're doing tail molds like this is to heat your plastisol up a little bit hotter than you normally would. Not a lot, but just a little bit so that way you get good adhesion between the two different sides, the tail mold and then, then this new color that's going in. It'll just it'll just help you when it comes to them sticking together and staying together well. And I like to hold a little bit of extra pressure for a little bit longer as well. When I do these tails like that, it's just a good practice. I don't know if it's necessary or not, but it's always a good idea to do that. Clean off this injector a little bit. And then we got one more to do. That third one may not have turned out. I got a cold, a cold mold, I think. Hopefully it fills out all the way. We'll check it out here in a second, but I might have only gotten three of them to go this time because my plastisol is cooling down on me. Like I told you guys earlier, we got a little bit of a cooler day today and it's just making it a little bit more difficult to work with this plastisol and keeping it hot. All right, so it's time to open up our mold and check out to see if our baits turned out. And it looks like we got all of them. It looks like all of them turned out really good. As you can see, this final one on this side gives you the best picture of what these are all looking like. And uh, let me get you guys a better view and I'll set up the camera better. So as you can see, they turned out pretty darn good. The adhesion to the tail looks pretty good, looks solid. And then the colors, I think, match pretty well. Pretty good little bluegill imitation if you ask me because sometimes those bluegills have those real chartreuse tails and then they have those greenish color bodies. So I think that this turned out pretty darn cool. Let's get at least one more going and then um, we'll wrap this thing up. Okay, so I'm gonna set some more of our tails into our mold and you just gotta take your time and be patient with it. And you gotta make sure that you're getting the tails positioned in to that mold again as close to perfect as possible because if they're off centered, it's gonna make the the way the mold close, it's not gonna close properly. So you're gonna end up getting flashing or something like that. So you really gotta make sure that you're getting these positioned back in exactly as they go in this mold. So that way everything kind of flows in and works like it's supposed to. It just, sometimes they don't wanna get in there just right so you kind of have to just be patient with it and uh, be gentle. Gentle is your friend when you're dealing with these little tiny tails and uh, trying to get them just right back into that mold. And then the other thing you really want to take into consideration is when you're putting the other side of the mold back on is you got to be real careful and gentle as well. And you see these notches right here and the holes, those line up everything so if you put that those two pieces together everything else should fall in line just like so and then i like to hold it tight as i put my clamps back on and then i'll just kind of hold everything tight and then clamp it down and once i get one clamp on there i know that everything's going to be tight enough that i can loosen everything up set everything up properly and uh get this other second clamp back on so we're going to warm up that watermelon candy and then we'll finish up this last set of chartreuse tail molds or chartreuse tail worms okay so a final set of chartreuse tail cutter worms is gonna get poured right now so our plastisol is good to go it's nice and hot gonna draw up this plastisol come up to the top of the mold even pressure down hold up pressure top off the sprue Go to the next one, hold that pressure. Number three. And number four. And something that I found with both of these new uh, molds from Dual Molds is they like to pour hotter. So don't burn your plastisol, but I've noticed that when you pour a little bit hotter, they do work a little bit better. So keep that in mind when you're using these molds. Um, I've, I've found that pouring it a little bit hotter than you normally would it is probably helpful. I don't know if it's because of the cast aluminum inside, but, um, but yeah, I do think that it makes for a better pour when you're pouring a little bit hotter with these molds. But, um, you know, find out for yourself. Maybe it's just me today because it's hot or it's cold where I'm at right now. But uh, yeah, we're gonna check these out. We're gonna let them cool down and then we'll pull them out and uh, 
see how they look. All right, so we got our cutter worms ready to come out of the mold. So I'm gonna open up our clamps here, open up the mold, and uh, we'll check these out. It looks like they turned out pretty, pretty good. Yep, I think they did. I think they turned out real good. One more, ready to go. Okay, well there you have it. We got our cutter worms. We've got 10 of the solid watermelon candy color, and then we have 10 of the chartreuse tails that we're gonna be giving away in today's video. So someone's gonna walk away with 20 of these baits. And uh, remember, all you gotta do is subscribe to my channel, like the video, comment on the video, and share this video out on your own social media. And be sure to tag me in it so I can share it out on my stuff as well. But I think these turned out really cool. I think it's a really cool mold. And uh, yeah, good luck in the giveaway. Well guys, that's gonna do it for today's video. I really hope you enjoyed checking out this new, brand new dual mold, the Cutter Worm. Pretty cool mold. It's got that hook slot in there. It's got the tail mold along with the worm mold all built into one. So when you buy it, you get all of it instead of having to buy two separate molds, which you traditionally have to do. I'm not sure that there's another mold out there like this one. Pretty cool concept that they came up with. Some pretty cool features that they don't have in some of their other baits. So I like that hook slot a lot. And uh, stay tuned for that. Another, the other video that I'm gonna do, the rigging video on this. Obviously you can Texas rig it, you can Carolina rig it, Nico rig it, and I'm gonna show you some ways that I think modifying this bait could be pretty cool to use it for multiple things. Obviously you can use it as a swim worm. Um, you could probably use it as a trailer on some different baits. And then you can also cut off that tail and I think use it as an eco rig. So check out that video coming up and then I'll show you some of the nail weights that I make using my Midwest finesse mold, which is pretty cool. I've done a video on that. So if that's something you're interested in, check back into some of my older videos. I have a, a video where I show you guys how I make nail weights using my Midwest finesse mold. And uh, yeah, today's video is over. Good luck in the giveaway. Just remember, you gotta subscribe to the channel, like today's video, comment on today's video, share out the giveaway video, this video right here, share it out, and then tag me also so I can share it on my Instagram, Facebook, wherever. So I really appreciate that, guys. And uh, good luck in the giveaway. Hope you enjoyed today's video. Go check this mold out, the description. The description's gonna have links of the stuff that I was using today. So again, hope you guys enjoyed. If you're new to the channel, make sure to subscribe and I'll see you guys next time. See ya.